Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. We are here to talk about accessories. More specifically, we're here to talk about the belts of James Bond. Yes, I know, we're getting very detail-oriented. But if you look over here to my fine friend from Casino Royale, you absolutely remember this from the Madagascar scene, from the free-running scene. But what a lot of you haven't seen is this. This is it. This is the belt that he wears. A lot of people have been looking to see what is that belt that he wears. It is simply put a black webbing belt. You can see some of the details of it. It looks like you would get at any kind of military place or Boy Scout. Um, it's got the chrome or the silver buckle, not the gold one that you see so much on, again, Boy Scouts and things like that. Um, but that's it. I mean, this is literally $5, maybe $7 best at any online shop, military, and this is all they used. I mean, it essentially was used to hold up his pants. Nothing fancy. Well, we're going to get a little fancier. All right, told you, promised we would get a little fancier. We're here in the Quantum of Solace area. There's lots of things, sunglasses, phones, knives, necklaces, Tom Ford shirts, screen used jeans and lo and behold what is this hanging well this is the belt that daniel craig aka james bond wears in casino royale now if we get up a little bit closer you can see that there's a texture here it's called a cross hatching that goes back and forth this is a prada belt it retailed for about 270 280 dollars very difficult if not impossible to find they stopped carrying them. It was called a Sarafiano. I believe that was the name. It's a great belt. Um, you can wear it with jeans, certainly white ones like that, but it's a little bit more elegant. I wear this with my more formal clothes, but again, that is the belt that he wore. Um, again, finding it at Prada, impossible. Finding it online, it's still going to be difficult to find, but if you can find one, it's a great piece and you can see him wearing it in the desert, as well as when he was in Haiti. There it is. Let's bring it up even one more notch. I promise I would take it up a notch. Here it is. Here is the belt, specifically from Brunella Cuccinelli. Here is the bag that it came in. Very nice bag. They don't do things uh, in a sloppy manner. This belt, which you can see right here, is a braided belt, pretty thick actually, with a very specific buckle. Now this Brunello belt was very hard to find. There was a wonderful gentleman online, Expat, that's his code name, who was able to locate a few of these, and I mean two or three. They had a different color, like a darker brown. This, you notice, is like a chestnut brown. It's braided, but at the very end, it's solid. So that's one of the things. Brunello has a lot of belts out there that are braided, but this is solid with the silver, with the solid piece right here. It's a very specific belt. This is the one that is screen accurate. Now, I've got to tell you, and you know I always give fair balance. Um, when I bought this, I was very excited, wore it with a pair of pants, wore it with a second pair of pants, and it is thick. Um, notice in my first pair of pants, there was a stain going across the length of the belt. And guess what? The second pair as well. The dye has been running in this. I guess my point is this. I did buy this on sale. This was $250 on sale. It's a $595 belt. You would think, Brunello, that for that much money, you wouldn't have the dye run. So I had to literally wipe this down, scrub it over time, scrub it over time, and now I can finally wear it with a pair of pants, and it's not going to dye. Now, I've got to tell you, if you want to try to find a replica out there, what's nice is this company called Windsor Saddles has actually created some copies. Now, this is not the most accurate one. This is in a very dark brown. You can see that they went the braided route, but really great quality, nice and thick as well. And just to go absolutely head to head, here is the one that Windsor Saddles came out with to replicate this belt. Now, obviously it's not dead on. Let me uh, unleash this a little bit so you can see head to head. Um, this one is a little wider, the replica is a little wider. 
you can see that it's a little darker as well. The weave is different. Um, however, it's a very nice belt to its own. Uh, the buckle is a little bit bigger than the screen accurate buckle. But as I mentioned, they're coming out with one that is the right color. So, um, if you can't get your hands on this one, there are wonderful replicas by Windsor Saddles that are out there. It's a nice, sturdy belt. Is it dead on? No, but I think it's their its own artistic interpretation. And by the way, as a nice little bonus, I wanted to show you, we very often talk about the RM Williams belt, and we've showed this to you before. From a comfort standpoint, look at the thinness of this belt. Very thin. When it comes to the Brunello one, it is at least twice, maybe even two and a half times as thick. The only reason I mention this is I wear this almost every single day. I wear this ad nauseum. I'm surprised it hasn't dry rotted and fallen apart, but I do treat it well. This one is going to take some time to break in. So if you do find one and you do invest in one, whatever the color, just remember it's going to be stiffer. Um, it's still an informal belt, but it's going to take some breaking time. Anyway, quick hit. This is accessories. This is still James Bond. And who knew that we would eventually get to belts? But say, you know, we've done underwear and socks. Why not? This has been David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. We'll see you very soon. Take care.